Hello slash x slash. I'm visiting from slash k slash, and would like to tell you a story in regards to some of my recent adventures. There are no skeletons in closets, dinosaurs walking, or trips to Bel Air. I'm not a writer by any means either, so please forgive me if my writing style isn't the greatest. Whether this story is paranormal, extraterrestrial, interdimensional or man-made, I'll leave up to you, as I still cannot decide for myself. You see, I like to fancy myself as a survivalist or prepper for some of you. I live in NV about an hour outside of Las Vegas, for certain reasons I'm keeping the exact location secret and purposely distorting some details. For those of you that don't know, a good 90% of Nevada is government or military owned land. A lot of it is free to roam though. The only areas that you really shouldn't venture to are well fenced and clearly marked for good reasons really. There are many still active, radioactive sites as well as government testing facilities, bombing ranges, and other things of that nature. They really aren't that exciting to be quite honest and usually only have some concrete foundations or target shacks on them and are probably hazardous to your health or safety at that. The sites that aren't are usually fully manned military bases where they cock about with drones. Now, I've never been one to believe in paranormal phenomenon. At best, I acknowledge that our government has several high-tech projects they keep veiled, but what I experienced has really made me question these beliefs. I digress however. Also, just a disclaimer, not all of these pictures are mine, because I didn't bring a camera with me. This story started about a month ago, around on a warm spring night, yes, it starts warming up early out here. When you were all getting snow it was hitting about 80th during midday. I had vacation time I had yet to cash in on, and it was nearing the point of expiration. So I took it, not really having any plans, or foresight into what I wanted to do with my two weeks off. I did however take some of my savings, and cashed in on an IR laser for my rifle and a night vision monocular headset. The first night of my vacation, I felt somewhat restless, so I started up my Minecraft server, and played around for a bit still feeling unsatisfied. I have always had trouble sitting still, knowing there's nothing to be productive with. My mind goes racing, coming up with hundreds of project ideas. I finally settled on the idea of camping. Unfortunately, most of my friends were busy with the drudgery of work, and no one I knew was willing to get away for the week. It dawned on me that I had never tried camping for a lengthy period of time, alone, for good reason though. The desert is a nasty place to get stranded, and death is a very real possibility, should something go terribly wrong. Between dehydration, broken bones, and rattlesnakes, you definitely have to be careful. The only thing I could really think of to combat this, would be to take along my 5W ham radio, and research the closest repeaters to different choice areas I have, to call for help if things went south, and my Yugo M76 just in case. After doing some research and quick site planning, I settled on an area I honestly didn't know very well, but looked promising. It has several abandoned silver mines, washes for shelter, and generally good wildlife to watch or take pot shots at. Of course, if anyone from PETA got wind of my ventures, they would have an absolute crap storm over the number of jackrabbits and coyotes I've laid waste to. So once settling on my location, I begin to pack. This wasn't difficult, as I always keep my bug out bag ready in my closet, and decided it was a good time to cycle out old inventory. This time was a bit different though, I decided to bring a few more electronics with me than usual, including my ham radio, my night vision monocular, and a solar charger just in case. I decided to leave my cell phone behind, and rely on a good old fashioned map and compass for navigation. From an early age in Boy Scouts, I've known how to navigate the old-fashioned way, and decided I'd give my rusty skills a bit of a test, and see how well I remembered the UTM coordinate system. The electronics were for some nighttime fun, and emergencies only. I woke up at 3.30 AM, day 2 of my vacation. I was excited as hell, and ready to head out. I decided to load up on crap before hitting the highway, 
and stopped and got some coffee and donuts, looking like some ridiculous slash K slash Amando on a dirt bike. After getting my sweet black nectar and a load of simple carbs, I headed off. The weather was great and the wind rushing over my face felt wonderful. As I got a few miles away from the turnoff, I remembered there was an Indian gas station fairly close to the exit as well. The Indian reservation boundaries are in odd shape, and for about a mile, the highway went right through the middle of it offering anyone who stopped in some tax-free gasoline. I stopped in after topping off my tank, and the cashier asked where I was off to. I told her where I was going, and was just planning to go camping. She mentioned the Air Force Base a few miles away had been doing some testing, and warned me not to get lost on their target range. This is definitely something to take seriously, as they do drop live ordnance. I thanked her for the advice, and headed out. It was early morning, and I continued to enjoy the feeling of wind on my face, and the liberating feeling of being able to break free of any social obligations. I reached the turnoff area, where it was all dirt slash gravel from there on. I performed a quick test on my ham radio, set the repeater offset, and verified the reception was clear. The dial tone registered, and I got a familiar weather forecast for the day. I was ready to begin. I headed down the dirt trail, and soldiered on through the bumps and washes. My bike frantically kicked up dust and rocks, until I finally reached a couple fork points in the trail. At this point, I couldn't quite remember which direction I was supposed to go, as I had only been in the area once before with a friend and he drove. I looked at my map, and got what I believed to be a good bearing, and headed off down the trail. Now, when I say trail, these are more like gravel roads that sometimes end, or bring you to a military base encampment, or some of the other small encampments around the state, or wildlife preserves, or even BLM land and campsites. Accidentally venturing to a military one isn't a huge deal, they'll usually just turn you around or wave you off. So I wasn't too horribly concerned about a run-in with anything unless you're up near Groom Lake, but that's a different beast. After driving down this particular trail for a while I realized I'm lost. None of the landscape looked familiar, and I had traveled a good 25 miles before reaching anything that looked like a decent campsite. I had packed plenty of water and food, so I wasn't concerned about finding a spring or anything edible. I had also remembered the way in which I came, so that wasn't really an issue either. At this point, I just decided it was adventure time and drove on for a while until I found a campsite I decided was suitable for a short stay. I ended up settling at the base of a mountain, near a dried up wash. It was a pretty nice area, and there were quite a few Joshua trees and trenches to set up in, for some decent afternoon shade. It wasn't rainy season at this point, so the threat of a flash flood taking me out wasn't really a concern either. After getting set up, I threw on my camelback, grabbed my rifle, and filled my flask with a bit of vodka just for fun. I was my own man now and had to answer to no one. I walked around a bit, heard the familiar sounds of cicadas, and headed towards another dry wash bed near the base of the mountain. After walking for a bit, I quickly became bored and took a swig of vodka. Sometimes it can take a bit to just detach from normal life and relax. I decided after my drink, it was time to start setting up targets and push my Yugo M76 to its limits. After setting up a few targets, I was good to go. I walked back to my campsite, identifying local plant life, and inspecting oddly shaped rocks, not really in any hurry. I stirred up a jackrabbit on the way back, who was less than happy to see my presence in the valley. I shouldered my rifle, to take a pot shot at it, and then noticed something in the corner of the scope. I adjusted the zoom, and got a closer look. It was a freshly killed coyote. I decided to let our little rabbit friend go, and headed towards the coyote carcass. The closer I got, the more pungent the air became. The smell of rotting meat was heavy. When I got closer to it, two things struck me as slightly odd. Number one, the pelt wasn't completely removed, but what had been, was fairly clean. There weren't any missing extremities, coyotes are considered a nuisance, 
so you can shoot them freely, but usually grabbing the pelt slash tail slash paw is common. Number two, it didn't look like there had been any entry or exit wounds from a bullet. Being a bit confused, I just wrote it off as a sloppy hunter who had found a coyote dead of natural causes and was scamming some farmer offering bounties on hides. Sometimes cannibalism happens in coyote packs, but it's not very common. I made it back to camp, started myself a fire, drank down a shot or two more of liquid courage, and settled on taking pot shots at the targets I set up. I tinkered around, adjusted my scope, and tried taking the longest shots I could. I made a few accurate shots out to 700M, and decided I had pushed my rifle as I could in my slightly buzzed state. Yes I know guns plus alcohol equals bad, but I wasn't exactly in a crowded area either, nor completely drunk. After letting the rifle cool down for a bit, and breaking open one of my MREs, I began cleaning it. After several failed attempts at keeping it 100% dust free, I gave up, and just did a quick field cleaning. It may not have passed the white glove test, but it would damn sure work if I needed it. After a nice five-star MRE meal, I decided to break out my ham radio and turned it on, seeing if there were any other hams in the area. I scanned the stations, and didn't really come across anything of interest, except for a few rangers reporting their status. I decided I'd do something that you're really not supposed to do, and started scanning the capped channels. For those that don't know, the military operates on Mars capped channels, which have a very high frequency, higher than VHF, so please forgive the reference. You can eavesdrop on them with the right radio modifications, and as long as you don't broadcast, you should be fine. I started scanning these channels, and came across a bit of chatter. They didn't seem to have much to say either, except area status reports. After a bit, I started getting bored listening to them all report on 10-100s, and turned off my radio. As dusk was turning to darkness I sat for a while, just letting myself go into a trance staring at the fire. As I decided another drink was in order, I began to hear a bit of crackling coming from my bag. I grabbed my bag, assuming some critter Gila monster had decided to make itself a new home, and instead, found my radio turned on slightly. I turned it up a bit, and realized that the sounds I was hearing were short bursts of what sounded like gunfire over the radio. Intrigued, I turned it up, and listened into whatever testing slash war games were going on. As I listened into the action, I heard what can only be described as fingernails on a chalkboard, coupled with a blood-curdling scream, and a bit of dying rabbit mixed in. As I reached for the knob to turn the volume down, I heard a pop, and then silence. My radio had gone out or blown a capacitor, and I was now without any form of communication. I sat there in silence for a moment, wondering if coming out here wasn't the best idea. After thinking about it for a moment, and a bit of self-reassurance that I was just picking up chatter from 100 miles away, I decided that I was just letting small, stupid things like the coyote carcass and the radio chatter get to me. For all I knew, it was just some war game being played, and new equipment being tested. I decided it was time to get some sleep, and I'd do a bit more exploring in the morning. I took one more swig, and crawled into my tent for a bit of sleep. As I awoke the next morning, and crawled out of my tent I felt like death. My back ached, and I was incredibly groggy and slow moving. I restarted the fire, filled up my mess kit pot with water, and started boiling it while pulling out some instant coffee. I decided that today I was going to do a bit of riding around and exploring. I looked at my radio lying next to my tent, and thought, guess I better be careful. After a morning coffee, and Murray eggs and bacon, I grabbed my rifle, and headed out to see if I could see any signs of life or find any old abandoned equipment or buildings. I biked up a natural trail, and came over a ridge, to a large stretch of open valley and land. Off in the distance, I could see the beginning of a military base's fence. When I saw this, I felt an incredible sinking feeling in my chest. Whatever was going on last night may very well have been happening just a few miles off. I shook off the feeling, and decided that I was just letting anxiety and my imagination get to me. I just told myself again that it was only war games, 
and that some noise was probably getting through the channels. I decided to just avoid the area, and rode back towards the campsite over the lower mountain ridge. As I had turned back, I noticed something off in the distance, on the side of the mountain face. It was what looked like an abandoned silver mine, or a natural cave of sorts. At this point, my curiosity got the better of me, and I shook off all fear I may have once had. Now I could actually do a bit of exploration. I rode up to the side, dismounted, grabbed my night vision and rifle, and peeked in. I couldn't tell how deep it was, but it seemed more man-made than anything. The rocks looked roughly carved, but I'm not a geologist either. I couldn't really smell or hear anything, so I decided to walk in a bit further. I put on my night vision, and waited for my eyes to adjust from bright desert sun to darkness. After a second my eyes adjusted, and I turned on my monocular. There wasn't much to be seen. I walked for a ways, but still no signs of anything that would excite anyone other than a geologist. I could see what looked like a turn a bit further back and decided against going too far in, since I wasn't experienced in spelunking. That's when something hit me. There is a primal fear everyone has, people debate what it is, or how we acquired it as a species, but it's there. It's a deep feeling of dread, like you are being watched or stalked by something horrific. Chills crawl up your body, and you feel that something just isn't right. Well I felt this, and immediately froze, rifle in hand, pointing down into the cave. I couldn't hear anything, nor could I see anything. I then, however, quickly realized what was wrong. The smell. It was the same pungent smell the coyote carcass was letting off. It seemed too rotten, too pungent, and too strong for just a coyote carcass. Even in the sun, it just seemed odd, but now I could smell it in the cave. This set off every alarm in my mind, and every ounce of fear in me told me to GTFO of there. I slowly backed out, while shouldering my rifle, pointing it towards the back of the cave. Every rock under my boot sounded 100 times louder, and every breath I took felt like it echoed through the entire cave. As I reached the entrance, I just turned and bolted for my bike. I started up, and rode back as quickly as possible. I was taking no chances now, and decided it was probably best to leave. Dusk started setting in as I was riding back, and I was contemplating just moving to a new site, or calling the trip off two days in. I still wasn't sure if any of this meant anything, or if I had just been overreacting, but I knew that some odd things had been happening. As I rode closer to my campsite, I noticed everything seemed off. As though nothing was how I left it. I was feeling really uneasy now, but wasn't about to leave my expensive equipment behind. As I got closer, I realized why everything seemed off. My campsite had been raided. My tent was torn, my mess kit was strewn about, the fire pit had been scattered, and my pack had been dumped out. I assessed the damage and realized something, nothing was missing, just vandalized. Even my radio, solar charger, and extra ammo remained. Stuff I was sure would be missing. My decision was made, I was calling it quits. I started packing up my bag, and whatever I could scavenge that hadn't been ripped up. This was about the time I noticed something else. There were no sounds at all. No cicada, no crickets, no birds, just complete and deafening silence. As I was packing, I quickly drained my flask to calm my nerves. Nothing at this point could have changed my mind about leaving. It was quickly becoming dark, and even with night vision and a rifle, whatever was out here was obviously screwing with me now. It was obvious this territory belonged to someone or something else, and my hunting trip turned tables on me. As it got darker, I decided to scan the area first, to make sure my surroundings were clear. As I looked around, I couldn't see much other than the familiar desert landscape. As I began to scan the area near the peak of the mountain, I saw something move. It was just visible behind a rocky area. I tried to make out the shape, but it was distorted and hidden by some larger rocks. I stared in that direction for what seemed like hours. Then, it stood up. To this day, 
I will not forget the sheer terror and fear I felt while looking at this thing. It's as though death and evil itself was staring right at me, and every part of my mind screamed, this cannot be real. This bipedal creature stood as though it was human, but the eyes were massive. Just massive blank, dark spots in my night vision. No reflection or gleam came from them. I couldn't distinguish any real features other than what seemed like a scaly texture. It just stood and looked in my direction, as though it knew I was watching it. Then it did something that nearly made me piss myself. It smiled. It was not a normal smile. It was a terrible, jagged tooth, joker grin smile. I took the safety off my rifle and shined the IR laser at it. After a brief pause, I delivered a fatal 8mm round to its head, or so I thought. The shriek that followed was deafening, blood curling, and absolutely terrible to hear. It was a scream that went straight into your shoulder and shattered it to bits. The dying screams of someone getting their head sawn off with a rusty Taliban blade would have been comforting at this point. I watched this thing shake and shudder for a moment and quickly delivered another round in its direction. I think I hit the center mass, but couldn't be sure. It ran at a pace I'm not even sure my bike could keep up with down the ridge. Not quite in my direction, but too close for comfort. I bolted down into the wash and kept my gun trained in its direction as best I could while running. I ducked into a small crevice and waited. I could hear grunts and screeches in the distance, at first they seemed to move closer and then further away. It was difficult to tell where the noises were coming from, but in the pitch blackness, I sure it wasn't going anywhere with that thing around. I stayed up all night, crouched in a crevice in the side of the wash, just waiting. Gun trained at the opening and kept awake only by adrenaline. It was the most exhausting and terrifying night of my life. Dawn broke and I hadn't heard any signs of the thing. It had been a good few hours since I took the first shot, but I waited until the daylight was strong to even think about moving from my spot. As the sun rose and the familiar sounds of wildlife returned, I felt safe enough to venture from my spot. Very carefully, I crept out, covered in dust and feeling incredibly drained, I emerged. I looked around to see if anything was around. There were no signs of whatever the hell was hunting me last night, so I decided to man up and head to my bike. I didn't even think to grab my equipment, I just slung my rifle on my shoulder and very reluctantly started the bike, fearing whatever came last night would hear me. After running it for about a minute, and no signs of movement were seen, I decided to carefully start heading out. Before that though, I had a thought. I wondered what may have been left behind where I scored a hit on the thing. I decided to check it out, since everything seemed clear. I drove up the ridge in DEFCON 1, scanned the area, just to make sure it wasn't watching or following me. I got up to the rocky area where I first saw it hiding at, and found a nice bit of blood splatter. I quickly grabbed a handful of earth and dried blood, and then booked it the hell out of the area. As I was driving down the trail, I started feeling as though I was being watched again. I only drove faster, and didn't look back. After I got home, out of about $500 worth of gear, keeping only my rifle, a couple magazines worth of ammo, and my night vision goggles, I decided to get to the bottom of this. I called up a friend of mine who works for the local university and told her the situation. I didn't exactly go into detail, but I explained that I had been hunting and shot something I wasn't sure of that had attacked me. She had me bring her the blood-stained rocks and I guess ran some DNA tests on them. She got back to me after about a month and basically told me I don't know what the hell this DNA is and explained to me that it only partially matched a few animals. Here's where everything gets really weird, I got a call from. Well I don't really know who to be honest. They referenced my camping, and said it was best I just forget about it. I've also noticed a few people tailing me while driving, and leapfrogging me on a regular basis, trading off following shifts. That's it really, I'm not sure where else to go from here. I'm sorry I can't really bring much closure, but now you know as much as I do.
In the other thread some folks were talking about getting together to go out and fighting evil beings in a woods. Well slash K slash I have a story about doing just that. B18 fresh out of high school no job, have all summer to mess around. Joke with cousin about going out and hunting monsters. After much deliberation we decided to go looking for nasties. We tell our parents we're going on a camping trip. Cousin finds a few guys with spooky stories on the internet, a select few are down with us coming by to have a look. Not really expect anything, but pack up SKS and a few hundred rounds of chink surplus ammo. My cousin, his friend James, and I hop in my cousin's truck and head up to the Upper Peninsula, since we had two leads from that area. First place is a joke, dude suspects a baddie of some sort is tormenting him. It is just coyotes. Next day head to next place. Now things get serious. Landowner dude tells a story about how he and his friends were camping way back in the woods and that he was stalked by some sort of humanoid near an old abandoned house in a woods landowner leads us out to the place, packing a 30 to 30. The forest seems unusually silent, we set up camp. That night I wake up to the sounds of shooting. Jim is outside with his mossbird shooting into the dark. Says he couldn't sleep and saw something scurrying around on all fours checking out the camp. Calm dude down, we sleep in shifts. Next morning we find blood near the camp. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Eat breakfast and walk around for hours until we come to an abandoned house. We decide to check it out. Check out ground floor and upstairs first, don't find anything but old furniture and trash. We need to go into the basement. Basement is pitch dark. Draw straws, I get the short one. I have to go in first. On the third step down a gut-wrenching scream rings out from the basement. I fall on my ass from fright and slide down a few steps before catching myself. A humanoid figure on all fours is bounding up the steps, it has dark brown skin and razor teeth try to shoulder SKS. It gets a few steps in front of me before I can shoulder my weapon. Cousin hits it with .357 the thing is hardly phased. I kick it, knocking it back just enough to shoulder my SKS and mag dump the thing. After much convulsing the thing stops moving. And I kid you not, the thing turned to dust. It turned to dust right in front of my goddamn eyes. The thing was screaming the whole time, it was unlike anything I had ever heard. We let the landowner know what happened and we left. We don't really talk about it anymore. Sometimes while I worked or go to school I get the feeling that I was born to protect people from things like that. I haven't gone looking for monsters since, but I feel like working and going to college is a waste of my time and that I was put on earth to hunt these things. Be hunting coyotes out in a cornfields. Be hunting at night. Be hunting over a pile of some jack lighted deer. Shoot two coyotes, leave them there. Half hour passes, nothing. Suddenly, silence. Complete silence. No bugs, no birds, no anything. Crunch scrape crunch tearing noise. WTF. Cloud goes over moon. Complete darkness. Like, can't see your own hand darkness. Moon comes back out. Something silvery, very low to ground, and about 8 feet long gnawing on dead coyote by gut pile. A soon pair of coyotes laid down to dine, explains the length, night vision sucks for distance recognition. Bring rifle to shoulder, sight approximately where a shoulder slash hip would be. 0.243 ballistic tips more than enough to mess a coyote even with a hip shot, crack. It just, kinda, stands up. Only gains like 6 inches in height but can now clearly see it only has 4 legs. Eyes. Oh god the eyes. Blood red, and huge. Like, bigger than a coyote's entire head huge. Work that bolt. Crack. Watch round impact in puff of dust and hair 3 inches behind slash beside one eye just kinda saunters off, like I'd hit it with a cork gun. 
Work the bolt faster than I've ever worked a bolt before. Crack. Bolt war can. Crack. Now out of sight. Rapidly reload. Tactically myself back to truck. Grab AR, 8 mags, and Hugh battery spotlight. Tactically my way back. 1 million candle power spotlight FTW. Blood and fur everywhere. Dead coyote is bitten clean in half. Like one bite. Fur is like fake redhead red. Like I'd shot a pipe full of cheap wigs. Notice blood trail. Blood looks black. That ain't right, not under incandescent light. Take Walmart receipt from pocket. Dab in blood. Blood is black. Frantically shine light all over woodline. Immediately light up the face slash eyes of that thing. It's just sitting there, watching. Sitting like a dog, but it's like six feet tall. Wait a minute its legs weren't that long. Shine light on its chest. It's leaning on an old fence post. Like a human. Covered in that fake redhead red fur. Mag dump AR. Reload. It appears completely unconcerned, even though there is now black blood clearly visible on its fur. Tactically nope my way back to truck. Haul ass to town. Get game warden. Game warden goes back out with me at first light, armed for bear. Coyotes and deer now reduced to clean, white bone. Bone still in skeleton position. No predator eats like that. No predator is that clean. Find blood and fur. Game warden takes samples in evidence bag. Go home. Be informed immediately upon returning home DNR has already called with analysis. I know for a fact I beat the warden back to town, DNR says it was a bobcat. My state hasn't had a confirmed bobcat sighting since the 30s. That thing was easily 20x the size of a bobcat. Call DNR back. Get brusquely told to drop the subject. I think the government was field testing some sentient bioweapon. It absorbed at least two good hits from a .243 and at least one good hit from 5.56 Swift A-frame. Never went back to farm after dark. Holy Dan. OP posted a screen cap of my story. I finally found and killed the red thing about three months ago. Was the farm neighbors inbred slash retarded and died for ID llama. Why they chose fake redhead red for a fur dye I don't know. Thing was furry as hell, like it had never been sheared. I guess darkness does something to one's eyes cause it had normal legs for a llama. I saw it in broad daylight in one of my farm's gullies, immediately recognized it, it was laying down and looked, exactly, how I remembered it, and shot it with a 7mm mag. It never moved, so I shot it three more times. Finally get up the courage to go over to it, had blown out the far shoulder and most of its chest cavity, I swear I love A-frames, with one of the shots and completely mutilated the ribs with the other three. I got it and skinned it and lo and behold it had a .243 bullet lodged in its neck vertebrae, which had healed, another one sitting against its left shoulder blade, which had also apparently healed, and a big divot missing out of its right eyebrow ridge, probably my first shot, the one I claimed hit a few inches behind an eye, that had also scarred over. Nope evidence of actually hitting it with my AR, but if I'd nicked it it wouldn't have shown. I also have an explanation for the black blood. Maroon will die, or whatever the heck they used, when fresh, plus blood black liquid. They must have just re-dyed the thing cause it was leaving dark smears in the leaves where it had been laying, I backtracked it to our property line fence and found several places it had laid down that were completely smeared in fur dye. Still have NFI why it was munching on dead coyote or even near a gut pile at all. Maybe it was mutated or something. Called the game warden within, uh, I think I might have messed it up, but do you remember when? Yeah I found it again and killed it. Should have told him you killed something that looked like what you described, just to mess with him. I did. He came out all tactical like with three sheriff's deputies in tow, then they collectively laughed their asses off when they realized I'd shot a llama in Iowa. 
They even asked if I wanted to be a dick to the llama's owner since it's obvious he doesn't really try to keep his animals on his property by pressing charges. I told them I was good with having shot the damn thing. Then they asked me if I was gonna eat the thing, hell and no, even after I knew what it was it was very creepy, and when I declined they helped me burn it. Came out all tactical like with three sheriff's deputies in tow why if you had already killed the creature? Because I had creeped the ever-loving damn out of the game warden on the original incident and he very vividly remembered both my story and the evidence he collected. He still maintains that he's never seen anything like it to this day, and since I didn't tell him it was a llama in the call to him he identified if there were more. Here's a quote, or at least as close as I can remember from the phone call. Alright mister, name, I'm on my way. Keep your rifle loaded and your head on a swivel. I know you said you killed it, but... Uh, sir, it's gutted and skinned. I blew the heart and lungs ten feet out the other side of it. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Well just in case, please. And be careful. So, you killed your neighbor's expensive pet. In his defense, it had become the meat-eating freak. I guess I'll contribute. Not really a super scary in a wood story, but be about seven years ago. Be broad flippin' daylight outside, interesting factor. Me and my friends dickin' around in the woods about a mile from my house. For the reference, I live in a moderately crowded neighborhood, like maybe 150 houses, in 3-4 to four square miles, so not too big, and plenty of woods to explore. Anyway. Live in Florida, so big-ass swales running through all of neighborhood, basically drain troughs for hurricanes. Friends and I decide to travel down one since it's in the spring and they're not flooded with hurricane runoff. Go maybe 30 to 40 yards and see a trail, like not a game trail, a legit trail freshly made. A walking trail. We're talking beaten down leaves and pine needles, palm fronds recently cut and removed. Someone or something made this not too long ago. Naming becomes relevant at this point, so FYI friends are brothers, A and C, C is older than me by two years, A is younger than me by one. A, being slightly timid tries to convince me and C not to go down trail, because it just has that creepy feel. Lol would have our dot JPG. Grab him by the wrist and go down the trail. C being the oldest feels like he needs to act all macho around me and A, so friggin' C, starts literally, pooping, like shouting, poop 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 poop, as loud as he can. And all of a sudden here fronds about 30 to 35 feet to our right in the dense brush start shaking and making palm frond sounds. HTTP colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark V equal sign 9 QLTLM 3F84. Go to 316 and that's the sound we heard, other than that vid unrelated. BTW can stop green texting now, I'm no good at it anyway. So now C and I are like WTF.PNG, but figure probably some squirrel cause they like to crawl in palmettos and stuff, whatever. A is now freaking out and crying, C put him over the edge with the hooping, and the palmettos rustling didn't help. So we keep going and by now we've traveled a good 50 yards from the entrance to the trail, and it's apparent that we're getting to the end cause it's starting to open up a bit. Now keep in mind we are not far by any means from the nearest road or houses for that matter, we walk down the swale that is connected to the road, only like 30 to 40 yards, and then only about another 50 yards down the trail. Anyway as soon as we step out into the clearing that the trail led to we all unanimously feel shivers down our back and A is really using it as an excuse to get us nope the heck out, but that's when C directed our attention to a small almost crawl space hole near the ground in dense bundle of vines hanging from a cypress tree. A very large cypress tree, so large in fact that you couldn't miss it, and there were so many vines around there really wasn't any place else to go but the little hole. So as we're debating whether or not we want to crawl through this hole in the vines, A is really starting to panic, and not just his little brother get worried thing, but like he's having a panic attack. At this point C just wants to take a home and come back, 
but I pressed on saying we just take a quick peek, A obliges, and we start walking towards it about 20 feet away. The three of us walk up to the hole in the vines and get down on our knees to take a peek. Then the palmettos behind us start making the same noise as before, so we leap back up to our feet, do a 180 and, out of the brush on the trail about 30 yards away this, tall completely black, cloudy figure creeps out onto the trail half slouched with almost a cadence-like step rocking its downward looking face left to right slowly and just walks the frick back into the other side of the trail. After pissing ourselves we hop into the hole in the vines like a rabbit hops into its den while being chased by a fox. So here's where it gets real. We're all pretty much freaking out right now, we're laying on the ground trying to hide from whatever that thing was, C and I keep telling you how we should have listened to him and how he was right, and we'll never force him to do anything else. When it just stands straight up points, and says, look. C and I scramble to our feet and then. what? Nailed to the huge cypress was about 20 feral cats. Just nailed to it. Not in any order, shape configuration, or anything. Just nailed there. Recently dead and bleeding all over the place. So completely forgetting what just took place on the other side of the vines which seems rather tame compared to what we had just seen, we crawled back through the vines and booked it back to the swale. As we were running back to the swale I swear I saw that thing, whatever it was, running alongside the trail keeping pace with us no longer slouching or creeping, but running, and running through the palmettos. A and C told me they didn't see anything running back with us, but I swear I did. So after we got back to the swale we sprinted to the road it ran off of, pulled our bikes out of the bushes, which we had stashed earlier before we found the trail, and rode the heck home. They went to their house, I went to mine and we never spoke about it ever again. So fast forward to 7 years later, to last last Friday the 20th of September, 2013. My best friend, A2, same name as other friend, but C and A moved to New York when their mom passed away, and I went camping along that same swale, needles to say I brought guns this time. I went in depth with the story with him, filling him in on all the details, as a too spooky story at our fire and he decided he wanted to go look for it, and being older, wiser, more operator, said, why the heck not? I swear we looked up and down that swale for an hour and a half, and I could not find any remnants of that trail, and remember how I said that Cypress was hard to miss. Yeah. Gone, completely gone. To this day I have no mother flippin' idea what happened that day, not even the slightest clue. Kind of want to go back, and find out what that was all about. BTW, sorry about it taking long to write this last one, for Chan's freaking out on me for some reason. Ha, huh, for once, I actually have a story that goes here. Live on street in middle of freaking nowhere. Road went on for miles longer back in the 1940s, now dead end slash turns into other street. 400 acres of woods immediately across road from driveway. Around 7 a.m. in mid-autumn, creeping mists and dawn just waking. Can't sleep, been awake for two days, unpleasant. Be standing in the driveway, smoking, looking at road pissed off it goes nowhere. Light suddenly filters through trees across road. Look up at strange glint. Full bag of Cheetos. Full size bag, not dainty lunch sack bag. Sitting on stump in woods, not 30 paces from me, surrounded by nothing but trees. Doubts arise. Sometimes people throw things out of moving cars, lose things from back of pickups. Yes, that demographic area. What the hell? Free stuff is free stuff. Saunter on a cross road, place one foot on other side of ditch. Moment sole of shoe is down, every dog in neighborhood starts howling. You know that feeling when your hackles raise, like right before or during a car accident, or right as that first punch is thrown, and time stops. That, might hear. Look up, suddenly realize I don't recognize the trees outside my own house. Been here for decades, seen these trees every goddamn day, suddenly different. 
Mutter to myself, I'm not that fat. MFW, understand it's a trap. Kick related. Flick stent but into woods, go inside and destroy will to be awake with daytime infomercials. Next day rolls by, trees gone back to normal. No sign of Cheetos. Shrug it off as maybe mind playing tricks on me in Samia slash bullshit etc. Never think of it until reading Stardust recommended by Goth GF, F you, Goth chicks are hot. Get to plot with Searwood. Feeling creeped out. Understand I was almost eaten, and on a Tuesday. So, late last month. Late at night. Just gone to bed. Minding my own business, trying to lull myself to sleep with thoughts of 1990s Lucy Lou. Suddenly, strange noise in the woods. What the heck? Think nothing of it. Five minutes later, strange noise again. Sounds like a baby getting strangled. Sound continues for some time. WTF. Dogs going nuts. Grab flashlight, put on pants. Go outside, start to search for whatever horrible monster is making that noise. Inner woods. Getting closer. Hear rustling in underbrush. Swing flashlight over to sight. See the shaking. Shiver down spine. Same noise again, loud as ever. Damn. Welp. Time to throw sticks at it. Stick tossed. Monstrosity books. Horrifying beast turns out to be. A fox. Apparently they have some messed up vocalizations. I shall share my spooky story. Not really in a wood scary, but just creepy in general. A little background info. I live in a very dense neighborhood. Like I said, not in a woods, but not a city. My home was about 110 years old at the time of the story, and it just looks creepy and out of place where it is. Anyway, be me. Be 14. Regular spring day. Inside playing vidya. I clearly hear dad outside hammering away at the fence outside. Mom downstairs doing laundry. I can faintly hear her on the phone. Decide to go get more vidya out of box in the adjoining room. Box of vidya is about 15 feet from the TV in the other room, in clear sight of each other, though you must do a 180 to look at either of them. Take out two games I want to play, run over to TV, flop them down. Looking at my selection, I want to play different games. Turn around and take out two more games. Take two steps to go back to TV. The original two aren't there. 180, look in box, laying on top. Boots, silly me. Run with all four games to TV. Clop them down, run back to get more. Kick out Spider-Man 2. Turn to go back to TV. Games.exe not found. Look back in box. Games in a box. Note point 3 ds All right, keep your shit, I must be doing this on accident. Decide to test this theory of teleporting games. Take the original four games plus Spider-Man 2. Walk like normal plop and down. Walk back to go get some BS game just to test the theory. Stand up and slowly start to walk towards the TV. That hair-raising moment that feels as if someone has ran an ice cube up your back and into your spine. The game's poofed. Slowly look back into box. All the games are magically there. I didn't want to tell anybody there, because it takes too long to tell and I would have sounded silly. Now I tell it when I get drunk with friends and we tell spooky stories. I got another one after this, pretty short. Even how harmless this story is, I still have goosebumps and chills after retelling it because of all the paranormal stuff that has gone on in my house. Be few months before teleporting games, winter. 2100 hours, dark as hell outside. Mom got me a new book, some Tom Clancy action packed operator Sam Fisher tale. Go into living room, don't turn on lights. 
Sit in front of big glass TV, the kind that in low light, you can see reflections. Light on in kitchen, just enough to read acceptably. Begin reading T.V. still off. In my peripheral vision at the top, I see a figure in the glass. Ever so slightly glance up at the T.V. Looks like a man is standing next to me and behind me. Chills so hard I almost faint. Start sweating but can't speak. Just look back down at book and try to pretend whatever it was isn't there. Staring blankly at page for like 45 minutes. Eventually call mother without batting my eye. Hear mom come and glance up to the screen. Spooky man has disappeared. I still live there and it bothers me to walk past the living room at night. I love these threads, so I'll post the closest I got to scary things. Be in a ranch in northern Mexico. Before all the drug dealer and narco violence. Just riding ATVs around the Monte, shooting with hunting rifles. Blowing up Nopales from far away. See boar. Decide to creep up on him and get a better view. Cuff. The food dash. Turn around. Massive boar to our 8 o'clock just staring. OH damn steady walk back to ATVs. Halfway back boar decides to screw us up. Full charge. Run mother lover run. Attempt to shoot Fricka. Probably missed but would have done nothing if I've hit him anyways. Friend gets to ATV first, starts it up and already riding away. Son of your bitch mother, wait for me pudo. Cop in moving ATV and floor it out of there. Boar chases for a good while. Sorry for crappy story but I wanted to contribute I love these threads. Not really in a woods per se, but still. B-15. In our bed, listening to music. Mom's room is right next to mine with a door adjoining our rooms. Hear something coming up the stairs, think it's just mom going to bed. Say goodnight. No response. Try again. No response. Do this three more times with same results. Slightly weird, but nothing to worry about, go back to my music. Hear a load of bumping slash banging from mom's room like someone's walking about, but see no light from around the doorframe. Wahadix.png Getting creeped out now, brush it off as her getting into her creaky ass bed or something. Suddenly the handle of the door connecting the two rooms goes apes it, like someone was sliding their hand down it without grasping it or something, it just kept going down then springing back up. Freaking underscore nope dot shit him gonity. Jump out of bed, run out of room with lights off, practically jump down the stairs and run into the living room. Mom is asleep on the sofa, brother is awake. He heard something from upstairs too. To this day I have no idea what happened. Weird things had happened before, but it was all stuff that seemed easily explained like plates falling out of the rack, bottles falling off the shelf in the bathroom etc, but this was terrifying. He tells me the front door is open and that the cat probably got out. We end up filing a report with the cops. Nothing was stolen or vandalized, no suspects, not much they can do. We end up getting an alarm system. By this point the cat has been gone a few days. Mourn the loss of my little orange operating buddy. A few days later we find him sleeping on the front porch, dirty from playing in the forest. Give him a bath after letting him back in. He doesn't do crap the whole, I've never seen a cat this calm while being dumped in water. I'm freaking out a little, he's got this, I've seen some stuff, face. He doesn't leave my side for the next few days, except to eat and crap and when I go to school. Not long after this, I see the man standing out in the construction site again. It's almost dinner time, the workers have all gone home. By now the house has a foundation and they've started putting up beams and stuff. I realize now he's really pale looking, can't make out his face except for larger than average eyes. He looks my way and I get this feeling like I ought to go say hi. Creep meter, ready creepy dude. 
Cat jumps up on windowsill and makes this growling noise and smacks at the glass. The guy's face moves and I hear this noise. The guy is hissing at my cat. And I can hear it across the street inside my house. At this point I'm considering getting my dad's Glock 21 out of his safe. He gave me the code when I turned 16 in case something happens and he isn't around. Cat decides he's had enough and hides under desk. The thing goes back into the woods. Tell my dad about it when he gets home, he was working late. At first he doesn't believe me, but then I remind him about the break-in. Not long after that dad decided it was time for me to learn how to shoot. So far I haven't seen the thing again, but there was an incident about 6 months after the break in which I'll have to put in another post because lol 2000 character limit. This happened a couple years back when I was in high school. B-17. Scared of the dark because too many scurry movies when I was little. Always sleep with the lights on. Every light in the goddamn house. Kitchen overhead light, bathroom light, bedroom light, lamps, the whole deal. Parents don't like it but they understand. I should explain just how terrified of the dark I am to emphasize this. I once sat in the bathtub surrounded by every flashlight in the house because the power went out. It's like whenever the lights turn off my body just shuts down. I have a hard time in movie theaters sometimes. Family moves out of the ghetto to a new nice all-white city. Well, 99.9% .9 white, there's a nod in the volunteer fire department. The new house is near a small forest that connects to some farmland. All new houses, development companies started building the area not two years ago. We move in the day after Thanksgiving. Wild onions growing all over the place, whole area smells like B.O. Our house is the first built at the end of a new street. My room is upstairs and has a window that looks out into the forest. After Christmas they begin work on two new houses on the street. Cut some trees down to make room for the construction site. My perfect view of the pretty forest has now been replaced with overweight construction workers. Fast forward about a week after New Year's. Look out my window one morning. See someone standing in the skeleton of this house. It's not a worker, they haven't been seen all day. The guy is just standing there, staring at the pile of blocks that will make up the foundation. Looks towards the forest for a second before wandering in. Fast forward another week, haven't seen this guy again. Wake up one morning. All the lights in my room are turned off. All the lights in the house are turned off. My window is open. The screen that keeps bugs out is gone. What the hell? Tell my dad about it, I'm legit freaked. I own a cabin in northern, actually middle-ish, Quebec. I go there mostly in the spring and summer, or winter, if I feel the urge to build snow tunnels. It's just a bit east of Reserve Ecologique Lewis Babel. God, thank Google, I never knew what that place was called. Anyway, pretty beautiful, lots of forest, a bit of swamp and hill. Not to mention awesome lakes for good measure. So anyway, it's April, I'm chilling in my awesome cabin. Watching DVDs, because I hold a generator there instead of a TV and heater, it was still pretty cold in April. Life's good and warm. Already evening, and I've spent all day watching horror movies. It seemed like a really good idea at the time. And then, suddenly, my heater just up and dies. For Pete's sake, we know .jpg. So anyway, I go outside to get some logs for my timber-powered stove slash heater. I didn't want to use it because I'm scared of fire like a little girl. What do you know, no logs. After crapping my pants at the prospect of going in the woods. Because of all those 7 spooky 14 me movies, I grab my trusty M1A, a spare mag, because extra paranoid, tape flashlight to barrel and head out. After 6 minutes looking for dead tree remember that my retarded ass didn't bring a hatchet. Get hatchet, continue search. Found a pretty good tree after about 15 minutes, 
Note, walked in a straight line from my cabin for 15 minutes, so I'm pretty far. It's completely dark at this point, and I'm chopping away, looking over my shoulder every few seconds. Suddenly hear sound, to my left, pretty loud trampling and twigs snapping. I look to my left and see nothing because it's dark. Grab rifle, point in sound's direction. Looks like their horns, pretty far. Like it's stuck in branches. Notice that the deer's quite large, for the distance we're at. So sorry guys, I got a call from my mom. She's in the hospital. Broke her hand when a wardrobe fell on her. Damn. She's fine though, dad's with her. So anyway, I was staring at the deer and... I'm kind of a pussy, so I just stood there looking at it. I could only really make out its antlers, but I figured it wasn't facing me. Put down rifle, go back to chopping. Right away hear strange noise from the same direction. It's kind of the same sound that horses make, you know, hee hee hey, but deer make a different noise. Spin round, pointing rifle at the thing. Crap my pants because it's become literally twice as tall, it was also closer. Or at least appeared closer. I'm completely frozen with fear, and then it starts turning towards me and I realize it's standing the F up. Nope.mkv Pull the trigger. The flashlight goes out. Must have taped it too close to the muzzle. I lose my mind completely, the dirt slash whatever makes that noise again. I'm already blasted off towards my cabin. Can't see anything, running like a Kenyan on KFC grand opening. You can guess what happens next. I tear my leg on something. Keep going. Realized I should be at my cabin by now, but nope. Oh damn I'm lost. Oh hell I'm lost and something is running toward me. Mag dump general direction of footsteps. Reload. Second mag is pinned at 5 rounds, lol Canada. Silence. Start running toward what I think must be the dirt road to my cabin. Find road. Find cabin. I'm saved. Watch Freddy Krueger all night because those are the only non-scary movies I brought. But that's not all, the next day I went out and my car had two dents on the driver's door. Like something rammed it. But not antler dents, horn dents. Like a rams. I have other stories, but I guess I'm a bit late to the party. Can't green text from phone. Be deputy on Lonely County Road in East TX. Dicking off on slash K slash. Halfway through thread. Time to leave. Seriously though. With the amount of time I spend in the middle of nowhere at the dead of night you would think I would have seen some stuff by now if even 5% of these stories are true. Head west a few miles. I live near Gibbons Creek Reservoir when I attended Texas A&M. I had a crazy schedule and would go for my runs down to Gravel County Roads at 1 to 3 a.m. When I started running I carried nothing more than a Kel-Tec P3 at and a flashlight. By the time I left I was running with a duty belt, a SIG P228, two mags, a flashlight, phone, knife, and pepper spray. It was like running in a Stephen King novel. Random fog, untamed woods, dogs sprinting at me while I just hope there isn't a hole in the fence, smelling animals before I saw silhouettes, etc. On one occasion I was 2.5 miles into a 5 mile run. I made the turn around and saw the fog rolling in, there was some rain as well. I kept my pace as I jogged back through the wooded section of the road. I could hear branches cracking in the woods, approximate 100 yards away. I stopped and listened, heard nothing else, and kept moving. Soon after, I heard rustling and snapping again, in the woods, about 100 yards out. I kept going this time and noticed that whatever it was, was keeping pace, note. With about a quarter mile until I was out of the woods, the noise continued to keep pace, but started getting closer. I went into a sprint. Something was crashing through the woods now, getting closer and closer. I pulled my P228 out and kept running. 
It was so close, it couldn't have been more than 15 yards away when I broke out of the woods and into a mowed field. I continued running about 50 yards into the open before I stopped. Whatever it was didn't follow me out of the woods. I took my flashlight and scanned the trees. I caught a set of unblinking eyes just beyond the tree lean, a dozen or so yards from the road. I stood there for 30 seconds and it never moved. I slowly backed up about 100 yards and kept my light on it. The eyes never went away. I kept my gun out the remaining 1.5 miles, scanning my six with the flashlight every two seconds. There's creepy stuff out there. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.